The fact that our altar hangings and vestments are now green says that we have entered a season of ordinary time, which seems ludicrous after the confusing and destabilizing past 10 days. We've seen things we never thought we'd see. Whenever I think I can't be shocked further, we learn something new and I'm proven wrong. Who knows what still lies in store in the coming days. The Christian, the priest, and the preacher in me has been likewise confused and shocked to the point of sounding like the Aflac duck. The supposed Christian rhetoric justifying support for the violence at the U.S. Capitol has left me shaking my head and saying, wait, what? I heard an interview of a woman in the crowd that it was right in the Bible that the soon-to-be former president was actually Jesus. I heard that and I nearly gave up. How could this have happened? How could the story of Jesus become corrupted in such a way? And how was it being used one more time to justify violence? The Gospel reading from John this morning is one of the stories of the calling of Jesus' inner circle, the disciples. The way these call stories are told in John is a bit different from the other Gospels. Here, Jesus' clairvoyance is, unclear, is on display, his clear sight, or psychic abilities as one might call them. In previous verses, Andrew was identified as a follower of John the Baptist, and after hearing what John had to say about Jesus, he started to follow him and not in the come follow me way, but more as surveillance. He goes to get his brother Peter and drags him to meet this most interesting guy. Jesus takes one look at Peter and knows who he is. And he says, you are Peter. And from now on, you will be called Cephas. Since Cephas means rock, it's clear that Jesus was saying to him, you will be my rock. Then Jesus finds Philip, and for the first time we hear, follow me. Philip then goes and gets one of his friends, Nathaniel, who's something of a snobby skeptic. How could the Messiah come from a backwater place like Nazareth? Jesus cuts through his resistance with more of his psychic ability. I already saw you sitting under the fig tree. These stories are about two things, following and seeing. In Greek, the word akaluthoi is not just follow, to trail after someone. It means to accompany and to assist. It's where we get the word acolyte, someone who serves with the priest within the worship service. Jesus wasn't looking for followers. He was looking for those who would go with him and serve with him. The purpose of accompanying Jesus was to get lived experience of him, his mission, his character, his identity. And not just to learn these things, but to enter into his mission and become like him. Following Jesus was never to be about staying behind him, letting him do all the work for us, and cheering him on. Following isn't a praise chorus. It's doing the work of love and peace in plain sight in the word, world, regardless of the risk. And now for the seeing part. Jesus sees with better vision than most of us. He sees the essence of a person. He sees them as if they are already perfect. And not just what they look like. And he says, come and walk with me. 
learn about me and from me and begin to see me in you. Once embarked on his mission, Jesus will prioritize the restoration of sight. It's where all of his healing miracles start. I believe that his focus on sight is the most important part of his ministry. He restores the ability to see, to see things well, and maybe even see as he sees. Ultimately, he hopes that those he heals and we will begin to see God in everyone and everywhere. Throughout his ministry, Jesus will see through his opponents, attempts to undermine and harm him. This is what seems to be missing in some large segments of American Christianity right now. This week I have seen a raft of articles in religious publications like Christianity Today and Sojourners about how much the Christian conservative movement has forsaken the message and meaning of Christ to align with political power. The claims that people are making have echoes of the Crusades and the slave owners. I believe that this comes from a kind of spiritual astigmatism. The vision is compromised by self-interest, fear, and wishful thinking. We are called to use the vision that Christ made possible, to have our eyes opened to the difference between light and shadow, discipleship and idolatry, love and fear. I don't think that the days ahead will be easy. We are to use our eyes and our minds to discern the truth as best we can when faced with what passes for news of the world and the web. The reason Jesus invited people to follow, to go with him, was to have first-hand experience of the work of Christ, not to hear of it from someone else. They were to go with him and become like him so that the next generations would also have the same lived experience of Christ and what it means what to do on the way to the dawning of God's kingdom come on earth that's what being the church is meant to be <laughs>